Hi, I'm Lou Paloma. <laughs> Let's talk about the trap. Lou Paloma, uh, definitely one of the most iconic characters in Tales from the Crypt. I mean, it's a name that you say, and I'd, on, I'd on instantly be like, oh, Tales from the Crypt? Like, you know, even though I think this episode's a little silly and whatnot, this actor really brings this character to life and makes him extremely memorable in a show that only has 20 minutes per episode and like, you know, freaking six, 14 to 18 episodes a season, you meet lots of characters for short amount of time and you probably couldn't tell me the name of them or, you know, a lot of the characters and explain what they're like or anything about them. Like Lou Paloma is a very memorable character. I mean, yes, granted, he says his name a lot, but I don't know. He brings such a presence to it. Uh, the way he acts, I just love it. I love this dude's performance as, as Lou. So I just wanted to point that out really quick. This episode is directed by Michael J. Fox, and he makes an appearance in this, and I... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about his intro into it. Like, they show it and he turns around and there's like a special music that plays and they like introduce him in such a, um, like, I don't know, it, like in a wink kind of way. Like, oh, this is Michael J. Fox. Did you expect that? I don't, it, I don't know. It's a weird choice. Maybe when it happened, I was like, hmm, I don't know. It's almost like you're, patting yourself on the back or, or putting a focus on you. Like, I don't know. It's like, hey, I'm that really famous guy that was in Back to the Future. Remember me? That's the way it felt when he turned around and, and the way they cued the music for him and everything. It just, I don't know. The reveal of him sounded very self-serving as the director of the episode. If he wasn't the director, I probably wouldn't have felt that way. But because I saw he was the director and then that happens, I was like, Really? Okay, that's fine. It's fine. I love that he's in it, and I love Michael J. Fox. It's just, yeah, anyone else feel like that? I'm, I'm probably crazy on that. That's okay. This plan is terrible. Just awful. And the fact that he has his brother, who works for the police department as the coroner, has anything to do with this. I mean, yes, he's pretty much strong-armed into it and his brother tells him no. Yeah, he, he should have said no and he shouldn't have went along with it, but he has no balls and he wants his he wants his brother's wife and he, and he comes up with this plan. But they would have got caught. I mean, the fact that Lou can't even stop scratching his balls and that they have to take a fireplace poker and beat him over the head with it and then they leave it in plain sight and the cops the variables that would take place it's so silly but it's tales from the crypt i mean you can't take any of this shit that seriously but the plan is so fucking asinine and they're like <laughs> the mom the mom's a total lunatic the shit she says to her son is just evil oh my good god um and i do like the twist here uh why Lou even bothers coming back, I don't know. I mean, he wants the money, obviously, but if, they, if they're not coming and whatnot, I don't think I'd fly back into the country, but his ego is out of control. Uh, but wherever he was, he looked like he was in paradise. Although, of course, eventually that 15 grand he had, especially with the plastic surgery, is going to run out pretty quick. Um, I feel like if they really wanted him to stay gone... They could have, like, sent him some money and been like, just stay the fuck away. Trust us. Like, here's a hundred grand out of the five hundred grand. Like, just stay away. And if he showed up, then you could have done this. But to completely fuck him out of it, like, you knew he was going to come back. And who knew what he was going to do at that point? He could have killed you. So, I don't know. Um, but I do love that he comes back and they're just like, who are you? I don't know. And, like, no, Lou's dead. And, and... He goes in court and he, I mean, how many times do you get to see without like time travel or any kind of, you know, thing like that, a guy gets sentenced to death in court for committing his own murder. I mean, the way they've set this episode up so that his plan backfires to where he is convicted of murdering himself and being put to death 
for him dying is a great twist. I mean, when you really think about it, to write that, like, okay, how do I get a guy convicted of murdering himself so that he will actually then be put to death even though he's being prosecuted for dying. So it's like total irony in every way. I, I love that twist. Uh, and I, I just dug that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, fun episode. And Lou's awesome. All right.